The architects in Subnautica are shrouded in the mystery, and we know very little about them. But I'm about to tell you everything we do know. Hey there, I'm Aki, and with Below Zero, we learned a lot of new stuff about architects. And al -An is probably my favorite part of the game. Everything in this video is taken directly from the game, and obviously, there will be major spoilers. Let's get started with Architect Anatomy. Thanks to Below Zero, we not only know what they look like, but we also know a lot about their organs and bones, and even have 3D models for them. At least for Alan's body. Architects construct their bodies out of a mix of biological and synthetic materials, using DNA of over a hundred different species. They have designed their physical forms to be the best they could possibly be. Which means nothing as silly as a rock slide would kill them, right? No. In Below Zero, you build al -An's body using three different main parts. The tissues, the organs and the bones. But there are some issues there. The first part's in-game model, the architect tissues, seems to match perfectly with the final body, more specifically the chest. They are apparently lever-like, adaptable to extreme environments, have a high resistance to damage and are extremely elastic. Their skeleton also seems to match very well with the final product, especially when adding the architect organs that even twist around some of the bones. The bones are made of an extremely durable and shatter-resistant material. <coughs> Rock slide. <coughs> but we don't know more than that. The organs are where the networks of biocomposite and cybernetic parts come in. The heart acts as a power source for cybernetic components and transfers nutrients to biocomponents. This is also what provides the power for the blink ability, the short teleportation forward, which is their main form of transport. It is apparently a scaled down version of the phase gate teleport, so not what warp has used to teleport. The brain, which I assume are these things, serves as a hub for computational power. So yeah, you can definitely say that Alan's head is pretty empty. <laughs> They don't have any digestive or respiratory systems, so they don't have to breathe or eat, which allows them to survive in extremely hazardous environments. But they are susceptible to diseases due to their biocomponents. According to the PDA, Alan's arms are secondary to the robotic arms floating around him and used for less fine motoric actions. The robotic arms are suspended via magnetism and all contain individual computing systems, so they can do stuff on their own. I mean, imagine you just want to do some homework and your arm runs off watching Netflix. <laughs> Let's get to the problems. The model you see in game when scanning the organs is not the same model used in the bodybuilding process and wouldn't even remotely fit into the body. But we'll get back to that later. However, if you take a closer look at some of the joints in the skeleton, you'll see that in areas that should be able to bend, there are no joints and just simply bone. Not only that, but Alan makes fun of our primitive ball and socket joints, while he has, that's right, ball and socket joints. <laughs> or alternatively, no joints at all. I don't know how his bones are floating here, but I mean, I guess we could explain that away with uh, sci-fi technology, but it just seems a little weird to have your bones floating. Like if I, if I poke your leg, is it just gonna fall off? <laughs> Those issues aside, since we took samples from several different architects to build Alan's body, but they still fit together, we can assume that they are either all exactly the same, or it works similarly to, well, Legos. Alien Lego, anyone? <laughs> I think the Lego theory is actually a lot more likely, since they would be able to adapt the bodies for specific environments and needs, and it would just make sense to do that. The general shape as a quadruped with human torso would probably be the same every time, but architects having different sizes, different hands, different tails, and so on, would just make sense. As for their colors, the glowing parts seem to change color with Alan's different emotions and change brightness when he speaks, so they could be an indicator of an architect's state of mind. And because we only know Al An, we have no idea if architects have different body colors, but it is definitely possible. However, Al An seem to be made of a similar material as the main precursor bases. <laughs> Top.
talking about the architecture. According to the PDA, the bases are made of an unknown metal alloy, and we have no idea what the symbols or patterns on the panels mean, if they have any purpose at all. They do seem to utilize iron crystals a lot in their buildings though, with even the lights being similar to iron crystals if not powered by them. The buildings we've seen so far are also all very cubic with hard edges and spikes and usually include some sort of cabling or being suspended by cables. This could just be their way of building underwater, but I have a feeling a lot of those cables do more than just support the base. Of course, now the question is, is this a general architectural theme of Architect Society or just how they build research facilities on 4546B? When traveling to their home world, we fly through what appears to be a city of some kind or skyscrapers that follow this same style and in the final scene we can clearly see similar buildings in the distance. They also seem to have mastered anti-gravitational technology, I mean we have an entire building flying here. <laughs> so after taking a closer look in Freecam, I'm now pretty sure that this is just how architects built their stuff. They're also capable of transforming matter to energy and then back to matter, which we can see when Alan transforms these pillars into a ship and integrates his body with it. Their mind is not bound to their bodies, so he can just transfer himself to the ship and back. Or to a cache. In Subnautica, we can find several precursor caches, which store the minds of multiple architects. Unlike the Sanctuary in Below Zero, where there's a single active mind stored in a massive facility that's able to talk to us even before being downloaded, these mind patterns are either broken or in stasis, and these caches store way more than just a single precursor. These caches were a sort of emergency shelter for architects after the Kara bacterium was released and started killing their bodies. I couldn't find any information as to why Al An seemingly got the Sanctuary Premium version, so I think this is just down to Al An being the main character in the story. According to Al An, being stored is similar to a factory reset for a precursor, and it means losing all the unique perspectives and traits an architect gain from interplay with the original storage medium. Then again, architect minds have another unique property. Architects are all connected in a sort of hive mind, but this is not a traditional hive mind as you might know from science fiction and Al An does not represent the entirety of the precursor race. Precursors have their own free will, so you can think of it more as a sort of embedded internet. Now that I think about it, maybe Elon Musk is just trying to turn us into precursors. They are able to communicate in real time, but still retain individual thoughts and personalities. Alan describes it as an intertwined network across space and says it enables them to understand what each component needs and feels. They essentially partially exist as network data. So now you should at least begin to understand how horrifying it must have been for Alan to have been separated from the network and being completely alone for probably the first time in his entire life. But a hive mind like that also comes with a very unique society. This is the main topic we know basically nothing about, so most of what I'm telling you here is going to be speculation. Their society is obviously vastly different from human society, due to their network, but there are still some clues to hierarchical elements. Al An says he disobeyed the directive from his network. When the bacteria escaped it was my fault. I disobeyed the directive from my network. This implies there was a group of architects organizing the Kara research and telling Alan what to do. I don't think this is a sort of precursor king or architect senate or something. I just think they organize different groups of architects for different things and they then tell those groups to sort out the other people. We of course also have Alan's premium sanctuary, which could indicate his high importance. But then again, I think that was just related to gameplay. We do know that owning the same body for a long time is considered prestigious in architect society and that you can duplicate yourself with the mind transfer thing, but it's considered beyond rude. And <laughs> according to Alan, any self-respecting architects would resolve the situation by deleting themselves. <laughs> yeah. 
we don't have any indication for architect families or children, which makes me think they don't procreate in the same way biological creatures do. As they have shown by creating warpers, they have no issues with DNA manipulation and creating new artificial life. So, they might as well create their own species. They also live a lot longer than humans, with a 96-year-old architect being considered extremely young, and the same one then being stored in one of the precursor caches at age 700. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they lived a thousand years or more, if they even have a limited lifespan, provided they can keep uploading the mines to new vessels. Alan also tells us about his seed code, and there are several references to a precursor being grown from seed. I don't think they're talking about plants here, though the idea of Alan going home and making sure to water his children is hilarious. <laughs> a seed is also used to refer to a randomized sequence of characters, usually to randomly generate something. And in this case, Maybe we're just randomly generating minds? What if architects are AIs? And I think I'll leave you with that thought. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments, like, share, subscribe and all of that stuff. Join my Discord server, the link is in the description and in the pinned comment. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye!